Hey y'all, thank you for stopping by the Command Her Network, a new digital TV channel aiming to amplify the voices of Caribbean and African women. Stick around, get comfortable, and enjoy the content of this video. So the recent news that's making waves among the Jamaican sports community is the nation's rankings list that was published by Track and Field's global governing body, The World Athletics. The World Athletics actually began publishing a global ranking system in 2019. According to the World Athletics website, the athletes score points based on a combination of result and place, depending on the level of the competition in which the result is achieved. The ranking is then based on their average score over a certain number of competitions in a defined period of time. Of course, what everyone is talking about is that on the women's side, Jamaica finished at the top of the list. No surprise there, with 75 points, followed by the USA in second with 74 points, and Ethiopia came in third, racking up 60 points. Last season was undeniably one for the Jamaican history books. Let's revisit the performances of the Jamaican women at the World Championships in Eugene, Oregon this past summer. Shelly Ann Fraser Price, third from your left, has been looking impeccable in the heat. She's got ahead already. And Sharika Jackson on the inside. It's Shelly Ann Fraser Price for her fifth world. Sharika Jackson in the purple for Great Britain. Dina Rasha Smith. It's Sharika Jackson, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and Dina Rasha Smith. 21-46. 21, it's T.T. Terry and Sharika Jackson. Here comes Jamaica running the United States. You talk about murdering a back stretch. Stephanie Ann McPherson now. Countless track and field fans anticipated the obliteration of the women's 100 meter and 200 meter world record, as well as the four by one record that was set by Team USA at the 2012 London Olympics. While none of these records were broken at the World Championships, we still enjoy the thrilling performance, starting with Jamaica's 1-2-3, which includes Shelly Ann Fraser Price, Sharika Jackson, and Elaine Thompson Hera. Shelly Ann won her fifth global title and set a championship record with a time of 10.67. Sharika, aka Jacko secured the silver and Elaine captured the bronze, her first individual medal in the 100 at the World Championships. Heading over to the 200, Sharika, mm, the Jamaican national champion over the 100 and 200. Talk about sweet redemption. We already knew that we had to be on world record watch with Sharika. And when she showed up to that 200 meter final in Eugene, she delivered. Sharika ran a championship record time of 21.45. That is the second fastest time over the 200 since Flojo. Sharika left Eugene as the only woman in track and field history to have earned a medal in the 100, the 200, and the 400 at the World Championships. Shelly Ann blazed through for second place with a time of 21.81. The beloved pocket rocket turned mommy rocket dipped under 22 seconds for the fourth time in her career. And how can we forget the performance of Brittany Anderson in the 100 meter hurdles? Brittany, 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 who was on the rise of becoming a dominant hurdle star for the country. Brittany ran a silver medal worthy 12.23 and beat the Olympic champion, Jasmine Camacho Quinn. We can't forget the field success. Shanika Ricketts, who was second at the 2019 World Championships in Doha, added another silver to her name. 
Lastly, in reflecting on Jamaica's performance at the World Championships in Eugene, we know that the women captured the silver in both the 4x1 and the 4x4. As we look back on Jamaica's monumental season, we have to honor the women who set the precedent for what we are seeing today. Let's dive even deeper into the history of women who have represented Team Jamaica at the World Championships. It was Merlene Ati, the infamous bronze queen, who in 1983 won a silver over the 200 at the inception of the World Championships in Helsinki. Merlene would go on to win bronze in Rome over the 100 and 200 at the 1987 World Championships. In 1993, Merlene would finally capture Jamaica's first gold over the 200 at the World Championships in Stuttgart, Germany. Sandy Richards also led the charge in Stuttgart, placing third in the 400 meter final and earning the country its first medal in the event. It would be 14 years before the incomparable Veronica Campbell Brown would storm in to capture Jamaica's first gold over the 100 at the World Championships in Osaka. Jamaica's first success in either of the women's hurdles events would come at the Gothenburg World Championships held in 1995. It was in Gothenburg where Dion Hemmings would advance to the 400 meter hurdles final to secure the bronze. At the 1997 World Championships in Athens, Michelle Freeman would rush in for the bronze, earning Jamaica its first medal in the 100 meter hurdles. 12 years later, a brilliant talent from St. Elizabeth who had already secured a silver in 2003 and the bronze in 2005 would finally claim Jamaica's long-awaited victory over the event. Bridget Foster Hilton captured the coveted gold at the 2009 World Championships in Berlin. Delarine Ennis London, who had already earned a silver in 2005 and a bronze in 2007, would earn a bronze again in 2009. With all of these impressive sprinters and hurdlers, it's no wonder that the Jamaican women have yet to miss a podium in recent years. It also makes sense as to why Jamaica has such a powerful relay squad. Jamaica's women's 4x1 team continues to be a force, having won five gold medals in the event. In the almost 40-year history of the World Championships, the Jamaican women have only missed the podium for the 4x1 twice. In due time, we'll see if the women's 4x4 squad will inch any closer to capturing a third gold medal moment. Now, I would be remiss to not mention the setbacks faced by the women we see on top today. Shelly Ann has discussed how she went into labor while watching the 100 meter final for the 2017 World Championships in London. She has expressed the difficulty in getting back to her original form after giving birth. At one point, there were many fans who doubted the longevity of Shelly's career due to her age as well as her becoming a mother. Outside of having my son, I would definitely say 2019 because listen, the work that it took to get to that level yes. is no joke. It was tears, sweat. It was, I actually had a C-section when I had my son, right. right? And I'm telling you, there are days I left training crying because my coat would hurt me. Elaine has spoken candidly about the ongoing struggles with her Achilles, and we know that last season, she experienced tremendous changes. She left Jamaica's most notable track club, MVP, at the beginning of her season. She battled a nagging shoulder injury, and she also separated from her sponsor, Nike, and signed under new sponsorship with Puma. Additionally, Elaine had to navigate being coached under her husband, Daron Hera. Two injuries that is bothering me, the Achilles and the new injuries was a shoulder. And for me to be punching out the blocks, I could not get that what I want. And I think that... 
Sharika, of course, came in last season with a vengeance after crashing out of the 200 meter heats at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And speaking of that memorable Tokyo Olympics, where the one, two, three also swept the hundred. <laughs> If you all recall, Brittany Anderson finished in last place in the 100 meter hurdles and she was visibly devastated. But last season, Brittany was on the prowl. She started off with a solid indoor season, finishing fourth in the 60 meter hurdles final at the World Indoor Championships in Belgrade. She went on to become the Jamaican national champion in the 100 meter hurdles, beating out the Olympic bronze medalist, Megan Tapper, as well as the 20 2015 world champion Danielle Williams. The evolution of Jamaican women's performance in the sport cannot be overlooked, and it drives home the point of what many have come to accept that Jamaica is not only a track and field nation, but the sprint factory of the world. Thank you for tuning in to Heights of Great Women. Tell me what you think about this achievement for Jamaica. What other countries in the Caribbean have the potential to dominate the women's side of track and field? Let me know in the comments below.